deserve hell, ask me why. That's a truth. That's a statement of fact. Here's another statement of fact. Everybody that hears my voice tonight knows for a fact that God exists. You know that you were created by Him, and you know that He made you. You know that He made this world. And there's another thing you know. You know you're guilty before Him. We all are guilty of breaking God's law. And it says that His law was written on our hearts. We are without excuse because He sent your conscience. He given you a conscience. That means you know in your heart that you've done wrong. You broke God's law. We all have. Every person that's ever walked this earth has broken God's law. And they've known they broke God's law. The second testimony he's given is creation. You look around and you see all this wonderful creation of God. Everything that he made. And it testifies that there was a creator. It tells about the creator that there's order and structure. There's intelligence. He created you. You know that he created you. You know that he exists. And you know you stand guilty before him. The question is this. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to trust in Jesus Christ? Or are you going to continue in your sinful, wicked ways? The kindest thing anybody could do tonight is not to offer you a blanket. It isn't to offer you food or clothing. It isn't to offer you a million dollars. The kindest thing anybody could do is to offer you the gift of eternal salvation. I can't save you. Ian can't save you. Chris can't save you. You can't save yourself. These policemen right here, they can't save you. The bus driver can't take you to heaven. Nobody can help you except for Jesus Christ alone. We are here to preach one thing. One thing and hear this very clearly. That we all stand guilty before a holy God. We will be judged guilty by that God. When we die, we will stand before Him. He will judge us according to our words, our thoughts, and our deeds. Maybe you do some good things, but what do you think? What do you think at night when you think those dirty, sinful, wicked thoughts? How would you like to have all of your thought life portrayed on a big movie screen? You know, you stand in front of your friends acting tough and hard and cool, and you stand in public, you get all dressed up, and my friend was talking about putting on uniforms. You put on nice clothes. You put on an act like you got it all together. But deep down inside, you know you don't. You don't have it all together. You know that you stand guilty before God. That's why you try so hard to cover up your wicked ways. That's, try, that's why you try so hard to numb the pain through drugs and alcohol and sex and pornography and all the television in your phones. These smartphones is the next new drug. People just stare at them because you don't have to deal with life. You don't have to deal with the truth that you are guilty before a perfect and holy God. God is perfect. He created you. He created me. He created this world. And because of that, he can decide what the rules are. And his rules are that he will accept no sin. He accepts only perfection. And there's not a person alive that's perfect. None of us. Not me, not you. So I beg you to admit, to humble yourself, admit that you are not perfect, admit that you stand guilty before God, and then cry out for, for forgiveness. That's called repentance. Beg God to credit you with the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. People say, why was Jesus Christ born of a virgin? It's a great question. Why was Jesus Christ born of a virgin? Jesus Christ had to be born of a virgin because he had to be perfect to be able to take the punishment for good things. If he was born of a man and a woman, he would have taken on the sins of his father, the sin of Adam passed down from generation to generation. Your father passes that sin down to you for generations. You don't have to teach a baby to do wrong. You have to teach a baby to do right. There's not a person out here that chooses to do wrong on their own. Any, think about this, even somebody that does something good like goes out and gives out food, pays for somebody's dinner, or, or gives away 
uh, clothes or goes down to works in a shelter, anything that people do good, it's not just because they're a good person, it's because they want something in return. It either builds up their pride, it feeds their pride, because look at everybody, look at the good stuff I've done. It covers up that guilt that they have that we all know we are guilty before God. That's a truth. The, whole, the Bible says that you must be perfect just as he is perfect, your creator. And you know it's true. You know it's true. When you go home and all the craziness is over and you're sitting in your bedroom at night, you're sitting on the couch at night, or you're sitting in your corner wherever you go at night, and it's all quiet and all your friends are gone, and you have nothing but you and your thoughts, you ask yourself, is that Bible true? Is what that guy said true? And if you ask yourself honestly, you'll recognize that you know it's true. You know God created you. You know that you're going to stand before him someday. Every one of us is going to die. Every one of us has a date set ahead of us where we are going to leave this world, this wicked place that we live in. We're going to pass on into eternity. And we're going to stand before the one that created us. He's perfect and holy. And the only way that you're going to escape that second death where you be cast into hell forever for your wicked deeds is punishment for your sin. The only way to escape that is to call on Jesus Christ. Put your faith in his sacrificial death. Let him take the punishment that you deserve. That's the only difference between me and a sinful person. Somebody came by her and they said, you Christians are so judgmental. I ain't judgmental at all. All I'm doing is telling you the difference between me and a person that's going to hell. And the only difference is I let Jesus Christ take the punishment for me. And I didn't even do that of my own free will. He chose me. He said, I'm going to give you the ability to do that. He humbles you. He gives you the ability to repent. If you will just do that, trust in Him. If you will repent, which means turn from your sins, turn and walk away from what you're doing, turn from your sinful desires, stop feeding the flesh, stop giving in to what your body wants to do, and obey Christ. Trust in Him alone. Trust only in Him. If you can hear my voice right now and you haven't trusted in Jesus Christ, I beg you to do it now. Don't let another minute go by. Don't wait. Don't go to bed tonight not having your sins forgiven, sir. Because if you go to bed tonight without your sins forgiven, you have no guarantee of waking up tomorrow. Every one of you in there, have you repented and trusted in Jesus Christ alone? Have you put your faith in Him alone? Or do you only trust in yourself? Do you only trust in your own good deeds? Who in there is willing to say God doesn't exist? Who's willing to say that? Nobody can honestly say that. You know He's real. You know that His Word is real. You know that He's going to judge you according to your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. And that you know when you stand before Him, you're going to be standing there without excuse. And you're going to say, God, I didn't know. And he's going to say, you know what? That night down, down on Broad Street, I sent somebody to tell you. You already knew that he was real, but I want to step further. And I sent somebody to preach to you the word that said, please, please put your trust in Jesus Christ. Don't trust in your own ways. Don't go another day. How many people are going to lay their head down on the bed tonight? and not wake up tomorrow. How many people, how many people right now, their heart's beating, The heart's beating, the blood is pumping through their veins right now. Do you realize that's a gift of God? Every beat of your heart is a gift of God. Every breath you take is a gift of God. Every thought you have, he's given you the ability to do it. You're not an accident. You didn't just happen. You weren't evolved from some slop. If you were evolved, then this doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. But the good news is it does make sense. Son, don't go home without putting your trust in Jesus Christ. You might not wake up tomorrow. You don't know that. You're a young man, but you may not have, a, may not have much time left. 
Trust in Jesus Christ. Go find a Bible and read it. Go find God's Word and read it. I beg you. Think about it right now. Right where you're standing. Think about it. Think about the fact that He's giving you. Is that the same man that beat Dan last year on the head? I don't think it is. <laughs> I beg you guys, if you could hear my voice tonight, the one truth is that you're not promised tomorrow. This may be the last chance you have to repent and trust in Jesus Christ. It may be the last chance that you ever have to talk to God and say, please God, forgive me. I'm wrong. I've done wrong. I've lived wrong. I've broken your laws. I've done everything I could to run away from you, God. And now I beg you to... What, excuse, what's that? Of course I'm cold, but guess what? That's how much I love you and care about you. I'm out here telling you to repent before you go to hell. No, no, you won't. You, you won't do. You will not because God has already given you His Son, and you won't repent and trust in Him. Trust in Him and turn from your wicked ways. There's nothing you can't you can't buy salvation. Nobody will trust in God on their own free will. They won't do it because you pay them or do something for them. Christ gave his life for you and you won't repent and turn to him. Jesus Christ is the only way that you're going to be able to know for certain that you are going to experience eternal life and forgiveness. We don't deserve it, guys. None of us deserve it. That's why it's called a gift. Salvation is a gift. There's nobody out here that deserves it. None of us do. If you receive Jesus Christ, if you're born again, if you repent and trust in Him, you receive salvation based solely on the gift of Jesus Christ. Think about this, guys. People try to make salvation about them. This is a big deal. Listen, it's not about you and me. It's not about you and me. That's how prideful we are. We even want to make salvation about us. Salvation is even about God. God created us so that He could send His Son to die for us so that He could present us to His Son as a gift. We are a gift to His Son. It's bigger than us. It's bigger than you and me. It's bigger than all this craziness going on around us. It's about God wanting to gift Himself, His Son, with the greatest gift ever. A bride. And that bride is us, the church. So He gave His life so that He could pay a penalty presented to him as a gift. Think about that. Think about that. It's not about you and me. We are just a gift. Jesus Christ gave his life so that we can be born again and given to him. Right. Isn't that cool? If you trust in Christ, if you repent put your trust in him, you become a gift offering to his son. Trust in Him. Trust in Him. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? Sir? And you should because you're going to have to stand before Him. Christ already did something for you, sir. He'll judge you and put you in hell is what He'll do. You trust in yourself. And don't do that. That's one thing that I can guarantee you. Man, I feel bad for people like that. I feel bad. Because he's going to remember those words when he stands before God. When he stands before God on the last day, he's going to be reminded. If somebody stood on the street, they're going to repent and trust in Christ. do it.
wants to die and after that the judgment. Are you ready, ma'am? Are you ready to stand before the one that made you that you know exists? That you know he's real? The greatest, kindest thing that can be told to you tonight is that Christ came into this world to save sinners. And every one of us are sinners. Every one of us have turned from God and we've done our own things. We've done what we want. We, 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 we seek after our own ways, right? Tell somebody if, he's, if he has redeemed you, if he has purchased you, he's purchased you out of that sinful way, a sinful life. Every one of us, all we want to do is feed this flesh. We want to do what it, it desires. And all it does is desire to turn us away from the one that created us. Sir, are you ready? What happens if you stand before God tonight? I hope so. That's awesome. Tell somebody about it. Good. If you are saved, I hope to see you someday in heaven. That's a good thing. It's good to know you're saved. If you're saved, there's nothing that can bother you. Nothing can get you down. Even on your worst day when you're feeling terrible and broken, you can turn around and say, you know what? No matter what, I know I'm going to heaven. Are you all ready? What happens if you don't make it to tomorrow? What happens is if, if all those plans that you've made in your head right now for tomorrow never happen? How prideful are we? Right now, everybody that's listening to me right now, how prideful. We're making plans for tonight. We're making plans for tomorrow. We're on our phones, texting our friends, calling our girlfriends, saying, I'm coming home right now. Here I come. How prideful. We got plans to go to work. We might not make it tomorrow. Humble yourself. Trust in Jesus Christ. And let him save you. Let him guarantee your future. Let him guarantee your salvation. Salvation means this. Here's what salvation means. It means that you are stuck and trapped in sin and you can't get out. You have no way out. Sin is your master and it controls you. And you do whatever it says. You may think you're doing what you want to do, but you're not. Salvation says this. When you admit that, when you humble and turn from that, Christ pays the penalty that you deserve for being trapped in that sin, buys you out of that, that, that slavery that you're in, and takes you to be with him sets you free and makes you totally free from that bondage of sin that you're in you know people that walking around living their, their sinful lives they tell me all the time i'm just doing what i want to do i'm just living my life I'm just doing my thing that ain't true the bible says that you are of your father the devil you're doing exactly what you did what the devil wants you to do you're not doing what you want to do that you're doing with the devil. The devil whispers into your ear. Man, go watch that porno. Hey, man, go smoke that crack pipe. Hey, go fire up that butt. That's what the devil tells you. He says, go get drunk, man. It ain't gonna do nothing. Hey, go sleep with that girl. It's gonna be fun. That's what the devil does. And you think that you're doing it because you want to. But in reality, you're doing what the devil wants you to do. You're a slave to sin. I can prove it. Try to stop. Try to stop for one day sinning. Go one day without committing a sin. You can't do it. None of us can. We are a slave to that sin. We're not doing what we want to do. We are trapped in slavery to sin. And what that sin is going to do is it's going to present us before God guilty of breaking all of his commandments. And it's going to stand back and laugh as we are cast into hell for eternity. But Jesus Christ loves you so much that even while you turn and run away from him, you spit in his face, you mock him, you make fun of him, you say, I don't have nothing to do with Christ. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Would you repent? Repent, turn. Turn and say, I, I, don't, I, I don't want this anymore. I admit it. I'm guilty. I'm wicked. And I don't deserve heaven. I'm not a good 
person. Please save me. Repent and trust not in your good works. Don't trust in a church. Don't trust in a man. Don't trust in me. Don't trust in anything but Jesus Christ. Trust in the only one, God in the flesh that gave his life for you to set you free from sin, to make you a new creation, to deliver you, to pay that penalty that you deserve. Put your trust in him alone. Don't trust in your own good work. Don't trust in your own abilities. Don't trust in your own good ways. Don't trust in your strength or your might or your wisdom. It could all be taken from you tomorrow. The smartest, strongest person on this street could walk out in the middle of the street, a bus could hit them, give them brain damage, and tomorrow they'd wake up in the hospital unable to even go to the bathroom from the brain damage. We're nothing. We're nothing. We walk around thinking we're something else, but we're nothing. All of our life is in God's hands. He holds it. He holds every heartbeat. He holds every breath. He knows the hair on your head. He knows every thought going through your mind right now. He's controlling every molecule of your body. And he says, if you will repent and trust in him, he will set you free. He will make you a new creation. Let him do that. Don't hold on to those sinful ways. Don't hold on to that desire. All right, you too. Have a good night, man. Don't hold on to that. Go to hell. Don't allow your desire for sin for wicked things to leave you in Christ. Put your trust in Him alone. Thank you for your service, sir. Have you trusted in Christ? I hope so. You know, that badge is a good thing here, but it ain't going to help you in eternity. It's not going to do no any good in eternity. That badge gives you a lot of, lot of privilege here. But when you stand before God, that bad is stripped away. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your service. But more than anything, sir, I beg you, trust in Jesus Christ alone. Because his service was greater than ours. Whew. I think I wore my voice out. Sorry, I got to no, go on. That's great. Uh, push, push balls and then I'll let Brian. Yeah.